Most people think Sjogren's is just a dryness disease. Dry eyes, dry mouth, annoying, but not life-threatening. But here's the truth. New research is proving it's far more dangerous than anyone realized. If you're interested in this topic, please, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let us know by typing interested in the comments right now. It truly helps us reach more people who need this information. Because what you're about to learn could save a life. For decades, doctors were looking in the wrong place. Blood tests came back normal. Scans didn't explain the symptoms. And so millions of patients were dismissed. But now, researchers in the UK have pulled back the curtain and found something shocking inside one of the body's smallest, most overlooked organs, the salivary gland. What they discovered wasn't just inflammation. It was an entire hidden world of cellular neighborhoods, some teeming with immune cells so aggressive, they may hold the key to why Sjogren spreads from the mouth to the lungs, the nerves, even the brain. And here's the kicker. This breakthrough could change the way doctors treat not just Sjogren's, but every autoimmune disease we know. But before we get there, let's start with the basics. What exactly is Sjogren's, and why has it been ignored for so long? So let's get clear on what Sjogren's actually is. Most textbooks and even a lot of doctors will tell you it's a disease of dryness. The immune system attacks the salivary and tear glands, and patients are left with gritty eyes, parched mouths, and endless fatigue. But that definition is dangerously incomplete. Because here's the hidden truth, Sjogren's doesn't stop at the glands. Once the immune system turns against the body, the attack often spreads far beyond the eyes and mouth. It can reach the joints, the lungs, the kidneys, the skin, and even the brain. And this is exactly why so many patients get dismissed. Their blood work looks fine. Their scans don't line up. On the surface, they don't fit into the neat categories doctors are trained to diagnose. But under the microscope, at the cellular level, the disease is waging a war no standard test can catch. That's where this new research comes in. For the first time, scientists have zoomed in on the salivary glands of Sjogren's patients with technology powerful enough to map every single cell. What they uncovered is rewriting everything we thought we knew about this disease. And in just a moment, I'll show you what they found inside those glands. Because once you see how these hidden immune neighborhoods are organized, you'll understand why Sjogren's is so unpredictable, and why treatment has failed for decades. Have you ever been told Sjogren's is just dryness? Comment just dryness if that's what you were told. For decades, doctors had only one way of looking at Sjogren's, through routine tests. A blood panel here, an ultrasound there, maybe even a biopsy. And yet time after time, these tests came back either inconclusive or flat-out normal. Patients were left in limbo, knowing something was terribly wrong, but with no medical proof. That's when researchers at the University of Birmingham decided to flip the script. Instead of looking at the big picture, they went microscopic. Not just the organ. Not just the tissue. But the individual cells inside the gland. They used a technology called single-cell transcriptomics. Sounds intimidating, right? But think of it this way. Picture yourself standing in Times Square during New Year's Eve. Thousands of voices all shouting at once. Normally, all you'd hear is noise. But single-cell transcriptomics is like giving you super hearing. Suddenly, you can listen to one person at a time. Each cell reveals what genes it's turning on, what it's doing in that very moment. Then they layered on another breakthrough, spatial molecular imaging. And this one is even cooler. Imagine Google Maps, but instead of streets and buildings, you're mapping every single cell in a gland. Not only do you see who's there, you see where they live, who their neighbors are, and how they interact. Together, these two tools gave researchers something no one had ever seen before, a living, breathing cellular map of Sjogren's disease. A map that doesn't just show damage, but reveals how different communities of cells are behaving inside the gland. And what they found stunned them. It wasn't one uniform battlefield of inflammation. It was a mosaic of microenvironments, each with its own rules. Some neighborhoods looked calm, almost normal. Others were chaotic, crammed with aggressive immune cells fighting a war against the body itself. But here's the kicker. One of these hidden neighborhoods was so unusual, so distinct, that researchers believe it could finally explain why Sjogren's symptoms spread so unpredictably from patient to patient. If your doctor could actually see this kind of cellular map before prescribing treatment, would you trust the diagnosis more? Comment map if your answer is yes. 
When the researchers mapped out these microscopic neighborhoods, the first thing they saw was variety. Not all areas of the gland were the same. Some neighborhoods were packed with epithelial cells, the structural cells that make up the glands themselves. Others were buzzing with immune cells, like little armies clustered together, constantly active. But then, one neighborhood stopped them in their tracks. It wasn't just inflamed tissue. It was a completely new kind of immune hotspot. This zone was enriched with IgA plasma cells, the very cells that pump out antibodies, and it had a unique partnership with a rare group of support cells called myoid cells. Why does this matter? Because IgA plasma cells don't just appear randomly. They are specialized, highly trained cells designed to fight infection in places like the gut or respiratory tract. So what were they doing in the salivary glands? And why were they clustering with myoid cells in a way no one had documented before? Here's the theory, this unusual partnership could be driving the unpredictable nature of Sjogren's. It may be the reason one patient develops neuropathy, another develops lung disease, and yet another is at risk of lymphoma. In other words, this hidden neighborhood might be the missing link that explains why Sjogren's look so different in every single person. And it goes deeper. This wasn't just one patient sample. Across the study, this same cellular pattern showed up repeatedly, meaning it's not random. It's a reproducible signature, something doctors could one day use to categorize patients into biological subtypes. Imagine this, instead of treating every Sjogren's patient the same way and hoping something works, doctors could finally identify which subgroup you fall into, and then target treatment accordingly. No more guesswork. No more trial and error. Real precision medicine. But here's the twist. Mapping these immune neighborhoods is only half the story. Because the next step could be even bigger, combining this tissue-level mapping with blood and serum data to create a complete biological fingerprint for every patient. And that's where the future of personalized treatment really begins. Do you believe every autoimmune patient deserves personalized treatment instead of a one-size-fits-all approach? Comment future if you agree. So what happens when you take these microscopic maps and combine them with patient data from blood and serum? Suddenly, Sjogren stops looking like one vague, messy illness, and instead, it divides into multiple subtypes, each with its own biological fingerprint. This approach is called stratified medicine. Picture this. Right now, doctors are tossing every Sjogren's patient into one giant bucket, treating them all the same way. But stratified medicine breaks that bucket into smaller, well-defined groups. It's like sorting a mixed bag of marbles into different colors. Suddenly, you can see clear patterns. And with those patterns comes power, the ability to match the right treatment to the right patient. We've already seen how this works in cancer treatment. A decade ago, lung cancer was treated as a single disease. The same chemotherapy, the same radiation, no matter who you were. And the results? Often brutal and limited. But once scientists started profiling tumors at the genetic and molecular level, everything changed. Doctors discovered that not all lung cancers are alike. Some are driven by EGFR mutations. Others by ALK rearrangements. And with that knowledge came precision drugs tailored to those exact mutations. Today, survival rates are climbing in ways that would have been unthinkable just a generation ago. Now imagine applying that same precision to Sjogren's. One subgroup of patients could be driven primarily by B-cell activity, making them perfect candidates for B-cell therapies like rituximab. Another subgroup might be dominated by plasma cells, requiring completely different interventions. And yet another may have immune patterns that directly impact the nervous system, meaning treatments could focus on calming nerve inflammation rather than just targeting glands. For the first time, we'd have a roadmap based not on vague symptoms like dry eyes or fatigue, but on what's actually happening inside your tissues at the cellular level. Imagine sitting in your rheumatologist's office and instead of hearing, let's try this medication and see if it helps, you hear, we ran your tissue and blood analysis. You fall into subtype 3. Here's the treatment that's proven to work for patients like you. No more years lost in trial and error. No more bouncing from one failed prescription to the next. Stratified medicine could collapse that painful timeline from years to weeks, finally giving patients the right treatment, the first time around. And here's where it gets even more exciting. Sjogren's might just be the beginning. Because the same tools being used to map these cellular neighborhoods could be applied to every autoimmune disease. Lupus. Rheumatoid arthritis. Multiple sclerosis. 
If Sjogren's is the proof of concept, then the ripple effects could spark a revolution in how we understand, diagnose, and treat autoimmunity itself. But here's the loop I want to leave you with. If this breakthrough moves forward, patients may one day face a choice, stick with the old system of trial and error medicine, or step into the new world of stratified treatments, where therapies are matched to their personal biology. And the bridge between those two worlds? Clinical trials. Would you join a clinical trial if it meant faster access to targeted treatments? Comment trial if you'd say yes. What makes this discovery so powerful is that it doesn't stop with Sjogren's. These same tools, single-cell mapping and spatial imaging, are already being applied to other autoimmune diseases. And the similarities are striking, almost unsettling. Take lupus. For decades, it has baffled doctors. Why do some patients only get the butterfly rash across their cheeks, while others suddenly face kidney failure or even seizures from brain involvement? Traditional blood tests couldn't explain it. But now, when scientists zoom in at the tissue level, they're seeing the same thing we saw in Sjogren's, immune cells clustering into distinct neighborhoods. Each cluster creates its own version of the disease, like different districts in a city. One neighborhood burns with skin rashes, another drives kidney inflammation, and another sparks neurological damage. Now look at rheumatoid arthritis. For years, it was taught as a joint-only condition, painful swelling, stiffness, erosion of cartilage. But molecular profiling has flipped that idea on its head. When researchers examine the actual tissue inside IA joints, they see enormous diversity. Some joints are dominated by T cells. Others are overrun with B cells. That's why the very same drug can be life-changing for one patient, and utterly useless for the next. It's not random. It's the architecture of the immune neighborhoods inside the joint that decides the outcome. And then there's multiple sclerosis, the classic autoimmune attack on the brain and spinal cord. With advanced tissue mapping, researchers are uncovering unique immune signatures inside MS lesions. Some of these signatures are aggressive and fast-moving, while others are slower and more smoldering. Once again, the immune system doesn't attack chaotically, it organizes itself into small, destructive ecosystems. So here's why this matters for Sjogren's patients. For decades, you've been told your disease is rare. An orphan condition. Something most doctors barely studied in medical school. But what this research proves is that Sjogren's isn't sitting on the sidelines at all. In fact, it may be the key puzzle piece that helps scientists understand autoimmunity as a whole. By studying Sjogren's, they're not just finding better treatments for dry eyes or fatigue, they may be cracking the immune code that ties every autoimmune disease together. But that raises a question that scientists are only beginning to tackle. What happens when Sjogren's immune attack doesn't stay in the glands, or the joints, or the skin, and starts invading the brain? Because if we can map entire neighborhoods of cells in the salivary gland, what might we discover inside the nervous system? Where the stakes are higher, the damage is deeper, and the consequences can be life-altering. If you want us to cover Sjogren's neurological symptoms in depth, comment brain below, because that's exactly where this research is heading next. Let's step back from the lab for a moment. Because let's be honest, if you're watching this, you probably don't care about the technical jargon of single-cell transcriptomics or spatial imaging for their own sake. What you care about is what all this means in real life, for patients living with Sjogren's, people like you, or someone you love. And here's the part nobody likes to talk about. The brutal truth is that most patients don't get diagnosed until years after their first symptoms begin. They walk into a clinic saying, I'm tired all the time, my eyes burn, my joints ache. And what do they hear? It's stress. Or, that's just menopause. Or the classic, you're just getting older. The blood tests come back normal, so they're sent home again. And again. And again. By the time someone finally recognizes that it's Sjogren's, it's often too late to prevent serious damage. The disease has already marched beyond the eyes and mouth. Sometimes it's attacking the lungs, leaving patients gasping for air. Sometimes it's targeting the nerves, causing burning pain, numbness, or loss of balance. In the most tragic cases, it even increases the risk of lymphoma, a type of blood cancer. I'll give you two examples that stick with me. One woman spent almost a decade searching for answers. She was told her joint pain and exhaustion were all in her head. When the truth finally came out, that it was Sjogren's, her kidneys were already permanently scarred. No amount of treatment could undo the years of neglect. 
Then there's a man who lived with stabbing nerve pain for years. Doctors kept running the same tests and finding nothing. They hinted it might be psychological. Only later did they discover it was Sjogren's, quietly attacking his spinal cord. By then, the damage was done, and his mobility would never fully return. This is why the Birmingham breakthrough matters so much. It doesn't just validate patients on paper. It proves, without a shadow of doubt, that they were never exaggerating, never imagining things. The disease was there all along, active at the cellular level, we just didn't have the technology to see it. Until now. And that validation is more than symbolic. With this kind of cellular mapping, doctors could stop dismissing patients and start catching Sjogren's earlier, when interventions can still make a difference. That means fewer years wasted in the medical wilderness. Fewer complications from unchecked progression. And a better chance of protecting vital organs before they're irreversibly damaged. But here's the cliffhanger we can't ignore. Having the science is one thing. Bringing it from the research bench into everyday clinics is another. How do we make sure these discoveries don't just sit in academic journals, but actually change the way real patients are treated? That's the unanswered question and it could define the future of autoimmune care. If you've ever been dismissed, brushed off, or told your symptoms were just in your head, type yes in the comments, because you are not alone. So where does this leave us? For the first time, researchers have pulled back the curtain on Sjogren's at the cellular level. What they saw wasn't a simple dryness disease. It was a battlefield of hidden neighborhoods, each one shaping the course of the illness in ways we never understood before. This discovery means two things. First, it validates every patient who has ever been dismissed, told their labs were fine, or brushed off as exaggerating. The suffering was real. The damage was there. We just didn't have the tools to see it. And second, it opens the door to a new era of treatment. Precision medicine. Tailored therapies. A future where Sjogren's isn't managed with one-size-fits-all drugs but with strategies designed for the exact biological fingerprint of each patient. But let's be clear, this research is just the beginning. The maps are here, but now comes the challenge. How do we bring them into clinics, into real doctor's offices, where patients are still waiting for answers? And beyond that, what will we find when we apply this same mapping to the brain, the nerves, or the immune hotspots that link Sjogren's to cancer risk? Here's the takeaway. For too long, Sjogren's patients have lived in the shadows, dismissed and ignored. That time is ending. Science is finally catching up to what patients have known all along. This disease is complex, it's dangerous, and it deserves serious attention. And here's where you come in. The more awareness we create, the faster this science moves from the lab to real lives. So hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with anyone struggling with unexplained symptoms. Because catching this disease early could save their life. And one last thing, drop the words never ignore in the comments if you believe Sjogren's research deserves the spotlight, and that no patient should ever be dismissed again.